Yo, what's good YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And man, how the mighty have fallen. Look at Kansas State. I mean, they are seven and four right now. And at one point, they were actually top ten in the nation. They're seven and four. So look at their state. Look at them. I mean, they've lost three straight West Virginia, Oklahoma, and us. And then they got back on track with the win. But look at this, man. West Virginia started out the season three and four. Now they are seven and four and ranked 24 in the nation. I mean, that is remarkable. And we have them coming up this week. I mean, if you look at their schedule. They've been on a win streak the last four games. Oklahoma State, they won. Kansas State, TCU, and Kansas. Now they got us. But, I mean, damn. I mean, they are really killing it at this point. I mean, they are on a roll. So this is not going to be an easy game. I mean, it's tough game after tough game. We did upset Oklahoma, dropped them down to eighth. And they have Oklahoma State. So you never know. They could get upset this week. But going forward, uh, I just want to see a couple of things. So Heisman Watch, look who's on the Heisman list. Alex Brown, and what's funny is that he's not even having the year that he had last year, but obviously his stats were kind of cut short because he did get hurt towards the last season of the game, or uh, last game of the season, so I mean, he's doing pretty good, he's not the best though, I'm surprised to see him up there, but I don't expect him to win it to be honest, unless he has just like a monster game, that's the only way I see him winning it, but man, for this week man, this is the week to to create your recruits, so I mean, submit those, so maybe you can get in the game for this next season, we're looking at those high school juniors now, so you don't want to miss your opportunity to get in the game hopefully play on Marquette hopefully we'll go up one more prestige so that we're a three-star school but we'll see um, but if you look at our recruiting board really quick before we get into this game so Patrick Williams is our top recruit right now he's a pretty good uh, bet right now I mean we're ahead a thousand points with him Georgia State looks like he wants to go to Dan Harris I mean it's pretty much locked up for him we're up by 2,500 I don't think there's no looking back uh, Matt Wesley uh, another tackle that we're, we want to get, but our main tackle here, Kenneth Carpenter, but Raphael Wheeler is our main tackle, and we're actually in the lead for him right now, and you know what's funny is that it's week 14, so he's visiting Washington right now, so we're probably not going to hold on to this lead for long. Mainly because, you know what, in the offseason, we're probably going to devote a lot of points to him because we do have to get some offensive line. We need some offensive line help badly. And uh, the rest of the guys are kind of just guys on our board that we do need for depth, but they aren't really truly important. So we're just keeping them on the board, keeping the points allocated. So let's just hop into this game, man. We're going up against West Virginia. Remember to submit your uh, recruiting information. I'll leave the template down in the description, down in the comment section. And let's just look at this matchup really quick. So they're 24 in the nation. They're kind of a middle of the road team. I mean, look at it. They're like middle of the pack in defense. I mean, it's not horrible. It's not great. On offense, I mean, it's yeah, I mean, it's not horrible, not great. I mean, like, same, they're kind of like in the same boat as uh, every other team you've played in the last couple weeks, except Oklahoma. I mean, it's just like a middle of the pack team statistically. So, we actually still have the number one rush defense, which is surprising, man, because we get we have games where we give up a bunch of yards. I mean, a bunch of yards, but look at our turnover differential definitely something that we have to correct. And it's mainly, I blame it on that big turnover game that we had, man nine turnovers i mean that is just ridiculous and we're still eight and three somehow but let's hop into this game man let's just get into it we need to keep keep this win streak going versus west virginia so let's get it let's go so west virginia has been on a little bit of a roll but we gotta stop that because we are on the road actually too so this is not gonna be an easy game so allison leading this west virginia offense out onto the field to start with the ball and right away they have all day to throw and maiden gets the 51 yard reception so facing a first and 10 now allison's gonna try to run this time almost gets sacked but he finds some running lanes and he gets a seven yard carry so facing a third and three now giving it off to mccoy who gets an open lane and lewis parker can't get off the block that time and that was an easy three plays down the field kennedy mccoy finishes it off so west virginia i mean they got a good offense they've always had a good offense even back when they had like Tavon austin i mean they've always had a pretty good offense with geno smith so here we go back out on offense we have to show what we can do now so facing a third and six this time christopher rubright 
gets the ball and i'm finding a way to use him man i just gotta use his big body that's what it is it's different than Ben Miller because I can run Ben Miller on routes. He's a great route runner. But Christopher Rubre, I just got to use his size, use him to take up space uh, in the defense when running these pass patterns because he definitely frees up a lot of space for people like Jamel Cooley, Kevin Oliver, and he's been quite the addition to the offense. And I can't wait to kind of use the double tight end set with him and Ben Miller next year. But here, here in this game, we finding Jackson Lundahl, and he's been actually coming on lately. He's been our fifth-string receiver, but he's been getting on the field quite a bit. He has about a catch or two a game, and he's doing pretty good. So he gets a 23-yard reception on that one. On this next play, second and eight, Jamel Cooley getting the ball once again from Ashton Cohen. And second and goal, my man Jimmy Ward comes in off the bench and gets the carry for the touchdown, and that's going to tie this game at seven so now three minutes left in this first quarter allison had a great first drive and here he is continuing this and roberson gets a block from his receiver on the outside and roberson i mean another easy pitch and catch for allison this time finding reggie roberson and roberson gets in for the touchdown so that is just two easy drives for west virginia so a lot of pressure on this offense to run down the field and score and this time Jamel Cool is getting the ball one more time so now facing a first and 10 an inside trap and this time Alex Brown busts it to the outside gets a nice 17 yard gain so now two minutes left in the first quarter Ashton Cohen's gonna drop back this time oh, Herman Rogers straight gets destroyed on that one so facing a fourth and seven I do try to go for it because we're in four down territory I mean if we lose the ball here they still have to drive quite a bit but we find Herman Rogers on the outside that time and that's going to be close to the 20 yard line so now facing a first and 10 Herman not even Herman Rogers Jackson Lundahl gets open for the 20 yard reception getting to about the one yard line and nice throw we got to watch it man Ashton Cohen's playing hurt still. He's still listed as questionable, but he's still in the game. So we got to watch those hits that he's taking back in that pocket. But Jimmy Ward gets in for the touchdown. So now it's a 14-14 game. And gotcha, Allison bitch. attempting to run the ball gets caught up that time by big Todd Williams. That sack streak. I think he's at five games straight with a sack. He gets another one. And here we are, back out on defense, third and five. But this time, Allison's going to find his receiver, Sims, on that one for the 12-yard reception. So now towards the end of the first quarter, Allison's going to drop back and look at what happens. Josh Dunbar gets burnt and gives up a big play. And I don't know what's been happening with Josh Dunbar the last couple games, but he's been kind of off. And here they cap off the drive, giving it to Haskins for the touchdown and that's going to be another score for this West Virginia offense we just cannot stop them on defense but this offense is rolling as well we got to show what we have so Ashton Cohen coming out on the next drive six minutes left in this second quarter and he's taking a big sack on that one to face a third and ten a couple plays later he tries to throw to Rubright but that's what I'm saying the route running just isn't there for Ben for uh, Rubright it's not Ben Miller there if that was Ben Miller that probably would have been an on target throw because they have that chemistry that. but on the next drive John Waters comes up with the interception he's got the offenses back the freshman I mean he's doing such a good job on that side of the field this year I'm glad I didn't put Dunbar over there because Dunbar seems like he's took taking a step back in his sophomore season but John Waters is doing wonders as a true freshman over there. So now facing a second and four, Ashton Cohen's going to run out for the nice seven-yard gain. So facing a second and ten, a couple of plays later, finding Herman Rogers across the middle for the nine-yard reception, getting to about the 15-yard line. So facing a third and one this time, Alex Brown's going to find an open lane and get to about the five yard line and a couple of plays later Jimmy Ward comes in spells him and gets in for the touchdown seems like Jimmy Ward's uh getting the benefits from Alex Brown moving ball down the field but that's okay man we we'll take it we need that teamwork gotcha, we need bitch. all we can get so on the next possession Jack Allison getting sacked this time by Hunter Greggs and Todd Williams Hunter Greggs just I mean they're just a great tandem at the left gotcha, and right bitch. end position and facing a third down Sending Lewis Parker on a blitz, and that's what I'm going to miss next season. Sending Lewis Parker, I mean, I forget that he's such a good pass rusher, even though he plays middle linebacker. 
he's so good at getting to the quarterback. So on the next possession, Jamel Cooley breaks a tackle, gets a nice run after catch that time. Nice chemistry. Look at that chem I'm going to miss a lot of things next year. We got a lot of different holes to fill, led by Lewis Parker and Ashton Cohen. I mean, those are two big spots to fill next season. So make sure you guys get your recruits filled out because we're going to need some help. We got Red Johnson coming in. Oh, oh my look God. at that juke move on that one. Alex Brown puts on the defender, gets in for the touchdown, and they just cannot – Stop Alex Brown in this game. He's only got one touchdown in this game, but, oh, man, another pass given up by Josh Dunbar. So facing a third and six now, a minute 15 left in the second quarter. They attempt to throw the receiver, but it's in front of the first down marker, so they do have to punt the ball away. So we got a minute left, and if you've noticed the last couple of games, in this two-minute drive that I put on before half, I usually, like, turn the ball over. Something monumental happens, so... I'm going to make sure I'm extra careful on this drive. So here on the second 11, roll Alex Brown out to motion. And look at what happens. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage with the safety. And Ashton Cohen drops an absolute dime for Alex Brown. And he dives and gets the touchdown. Look at that perfect pocket. The pass protection has been so good this game. And that's the reason why we put up 35 points in this first half led by that nice catch that time by Alex Brown so on the ensuing possession that's Josh Dunbar once again I mean giving up another big play so they attempt to kick the field goal but that one's gonna be short but Chad Ball back to receive the kick and he's got an open lane a couple of guys to miss look at that running back he's right behind me the impact running back but oh I almost swerve in I had no choice but Chad Ball gets tackled so we go into half up by two scores we're up by two touchdowns so we just gotta manage to keep our offense doing what it's doing so facing a first and 10 alex brown a lot of running room on this one getting tackled up to the 25 yard line in their territory but facing a third and 13 ashton cohen is gonna not have enough time to throw that ball he's gonna get hit on the throw so we do attempt the long field goal with davis and that one is going to be good so it's a 17 point lead for this marquette team and here is allison taking this offense back out on the field and finding roberson and roberson is man he's been a handful and once again there's roberson and that's a blown coverage that time by the Golden Eagles and Roberson and Allison take advantage and they trim this lead down to just 10 points, two possession games. So now we come back out on the field, first and 10. This time Ashton Cohen's gonna throw over the middle, find Kevin Oliver for the 16 yard reception. So now facing a second and three, this time on a play action, the pass rush is gonna be too quick getting in there. Poor pass blocking on that one. So facing a third and eight this time. Finding Eddie McCray across the middle, but that's going to be short of the first down marker. So we're in four down territory. We attempt to go for it, but Alex Brown gets swallowed up by Tonkery on the tackle that time. And Tonkery has been all over the field for this West Virginia defense in this game. But now we just have to play some defense. But look at what happens. On the first play of the next possession, West Virginia gets another touchdown this time marcus sims gets found by allison and at that point i'm like i can't take enough of dunbar i pull him out of the game so anthony jetter comes in to replace him on defense so coming back out i mean west virginia has the momentum so here's jetter on the left side and allison back out to throw the ball he's attempting to throw the ball out to the flat but john waters is there for the defense so allison on a third and 11 attempting to throw a screen pass one man to beat vince cohen but he comes up with the tackle and we force them to punt so now coming back out six and a half minutes left in this game finding herman rogers is ashton cohen on that one so now another counter play i got on they cannot no i mean they just can't adjust to these counter plays and this time alex brown busted to the outside and 30 yards added to his totals of this game and now inside the goal line first and goal finding eddie mccray on the slant route is ashton cohen and what a nice game he's having 
23 for 31 up to this point, two touchdowns, and I can't ask for a better game from Ashton Cohen. So we're depending on our defense here, and they're testing the guy off the bench. Anthony Jetter comes up with a deflection. So now facing another first in town down a couple of plays that. later. They test him again, but this time Anthony Jetter comes up with the interception on the outside and what a great move that was putting Jetter in because right away he comes up with the interception and that is going to be a crucial one because coming back out on offense Alex Brown getting the handoff to the outside and they just can't stop it the counter is just killing them this game so I keep running it you got to keep them honest though so here on the next play, giving the ball to Alex Brown to the outside for the nice nine-yard carry. So now there's about four minutes left in this game. On a play action, jet sweep. Ashton Cohen's going to find Jimmy Ward, run through a couple defenders, and he's going to get in for the touchdown. So Jimmy Ward, four touchdowns on the game. And, I mean, this, this lead has been pretty much blown open because of the play from Anthony Jetter him coming in making that impact getting that uh, interception and we score off of it so as long as we don't give up any big plays we're in good position here and on a second and seven John Waters is gonna be there for his second interception of the game this time and that's what happens when you have two receivers in the same area John Waters just happens to be in the right position he comes up with an interception but on the next possession Ashton Cohen getting tackled that time and Schuler has three sacks in this game so now they got about a minute left to drive down the field in this next play giving it to Simmons and I mean they got a lot of ground to make up they had to score at least three times and here's Allison once again a minute left in this game this time Anthony Jeter in that safety but this time he tosses the ball over Jeter finds a West so Allison almost into uh, the end zone on that one but now facing a first and goal attempting to throw a ball that. across the middle but this time Vince Cohen is going to be there for the fourth interception of this game and that's gonna smell victory for the Marquette Golden Eagles and here we go man I mean we are just rolling right now after beating Oklahoma we do beat West Virginia and we are rolling so hopefully Oklahoma State upsets Oklahoma so that maybe we do have a shot to be in the conference championship I'm not sure how the rules go but I believe it goes by conference record first not overall record but we'll see so hit subscribe hit that like button man i mean what a nice game it was from a couple of people jetter gets that interception coming off the bench todd williams with the sack continuing that sack streak and john waters continues his freshman campaign with two interceptions let's get it man going into bowl season going into the conference championship week i mean hopefully we get in we'll see next week but stay tuned let's go